Alrighty guys, what is going on? Today is a pretty special day. I've been wanting to uh, ride one of these bikes for a while, and we have a very special guest with us today. It's Dan Dan the Fireman. How you doing, man? How you pretty doing? Pretty good, man. This pretty is, good. This, so this is my baby. So this is your baby. This is your personal bike, and you've graciously yeah. allowed me to take a little yes. bit of a test rip on it. Yes. Um, this bike, I feel like, you know, people talked about it a whole lot when it came out. Right, like people were super excited about oh, it. We yeah. really talked about it. I feel like it's died down a little bit, but you yeah. still you die hard for this bike. You think it's the best, right? Dude, I absolutely love this. The I think the reason why a lot of people stop talking about it is because the prototype is different than the production. Yeah, but because people just, thought we were going to get that 750, that real flat tracks. Yeah. yeah, that looked uncomfortable compared to this. This is bike <laughs> yeah. is more co more comfortable, but uh, you're you're gonna have a lot of fun. It does it does have some power to it. It's 120 horsepower, and that's basically all the specs I know. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's got traction control and all that fun stuff, dual disc front brakes. So any bike that you've ever ridden, it's going to be a lot like this. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is I was riding it earlier at the range, just kind of goofing around at slow speeds. The thing that's weird about it to me is it has this big 19-inch wheel at the front. So yeah. it has that kind of big rolling front wheel. But then the rear is a 150, and it's got these <laughs> tires that they're not really V-shaped. They're actually quite flat. Um, yeah. So I thought that the uh, the riding characteristics of it were going to be really kind of off and really different. But to be honest, it, it translates pretty well. It works pretty okay. Um, yeah. I, I thought in that slow speed stuff. But I think here on the twisties, it's going to be fun. So 1,200 cc, 120 horsepower. Do you know torque figures? No. So that, that's all loads, stuff. Huh? That's, that's, the, that's the only thing that, like, I just don't care. It's like I, I, I test yeah. rode it. I did all that stuff. I went from a Sportster to this. So, so I already it felt like a, a rocket upgrade. ship, yeah. So, yeah, this is tuned, so it's going to be a little bit more snappy. Um, yeah. I'm going to, before you head off, I'll, I'll put on traction control and all that stuff. Because Man, it does that front have light is so cool. I just noticed yeah. that. <laughs> that is badass. Yeah, I love it. And then you got, obviously, the brights. It's a really pretty bike, man. I think the oh, coolest dude. thing about it is just this paint is so flaky. And, oh, man. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, it really it's is. super cool. Can't wait, man. It's uh, You're going to have a lot of fun on this. <laughs> yeah. You sound so a little right nervous, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's my baby. It's yeah, my baby. Yeah, yeah, I get so it. So this is your typical screen. You can actually change your screens up if you oh, want. Oh, it's so touch you got two That's cool. Yeah, you get two different speedos. You can mess around with all this stuff, but typically when you keep your hands on the handlebars, you can use that. Yeah. So I'm going to – It's sport mode is what you're going to want to be in. It's just for fun. Traction control. So you got – uh, lean angle traction control. You got ABS, lean angle ABS. You got uh, base wheelie mitigation. So you know the specs. So you know I know the safety it. specs. Yeah. So when, whenever anybody asks me the engine and ergonomics, the rake, lean, all that stuff, it's like you know what? Yeah. At the end of the day, what safety rider aids is there, and that's what I care about. So yeah. Plus, it looks good, and that's what I picked. So the bike's all ready for you, man. Um, I want you to have fun. So do what you have to do. If you're not back in 30 minutes, I'm stealing your bike and then I'm going to go <laughs> home. <So>. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not my bike. It's the Twisted Road bike, so he's stealing someone <laughs> yeah, else's that's bike. True. So no skin off my back. So mounting up here on the FTR. Um, you can flat foot. <laughs> yeah, I, I can flat foot. That was one thing that was funny. When I when I got on, you're like, hey, man, it's a tall bike. I'm like, I got to bend in my knee, bro. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I have to park next to a curb and put my foot there. Um. Like I said, I think one thing that you notice when you when you sit on it is just it feels like a like a sport bike, right? It doesn't feel yeah. like a cruiser. It doesn't feel like anything like that. It feels like a proper naked sport bike. But you start to notice that long wheelbase as soon as you take off. And it yeah, gives so it such a different quality to it, you know? You get stability with it, but then you get the power of kind of like a sportier V-twin type thing. Yeah. Um, no, this this thing has balls, man. I remember at the range, I, I cracked it a little in first gear. It's, it's got some balls yeah. to it for sure. And that's the only reason why I'm letting you ride it on the mountain is because you passed your Arizona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had to, had to make sure that I was me. MSF qualified to, to go and have some fun with it. Yep. So I think the, the one I think the one thing that about your bike is the travesty is you have the stock exhaust on there, but I know yes. you're gonna get that sorted out soon. I'm gonna get that sorted out. I'm hoping Vance and Hines at some point will get something, but yeah, because right now it's just <laughs> 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 kind of scooter like. It's fun, Yeah, <laughs> it's not a safety feature, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah. One last thing. What's the weight on this thing? I forgot. It's close to 500. 500. Yeah. Now you can yeah. definitely. It feels dense, you know? It feels yeah. dense, really meaty. And I honestly think that's just down to how big the engine is, right? Like, the engine's 1,200 cc's, that, and it's just... That, too. It's and, enormous. And I think Indian creates, like, a very uh, high-quality 
it doesn't feel loose. Like you know, when you fit, when you grab something that's like cheaply made, it, it just feels like it's, no. Yeah, it feels yeah. like a premium motorcycle. And and this thing, yeah. what was it like, eighteen grand or something, right? Yeah, pretty much out the door with all the financing, yeah, and all the yeah, yeah, offers and stuff. Yeah, but I mean, screw it. I haven't bought a bike since twenty twelve. So no, no, I'm not, I'm not saying it's too expensive. <laughs> what I was saying is like it feels like an expensive bike. Like it oh, feels yeah. nice. Like this touch screen, premium. all this stuff is really premium. Yeah, but uh, let's take it out for a ride. See you later, man. <laughs> You're like, God, what am I doing? <laughs> Everyone's going to be face. like, why, why are you letting Yaminu ride your motorcycle? <laughs> it's like, well, well he practiced like said, MSF. He, pract- he practiced it on the range, and I, I saw how yeah. he rides. So it's, you know, have fun. All right, man. See you later. Thanks, man. All righty. <laughs> Oh, no quick shifter. Okay. So very initial first impressions. It just, man, this thing is such a weird blend between like a cruiser and a sport bike. Um, it really doesn't feel like a, a sport bike, but it also really doesn't feel like a cruiser. Um, Flips down pretty nicely. It's so quiet right now. This is, I can literally, it's like I'm riding an electric bike. I can't hear this bike at all. Um, so yeah, because of these tires, it's got that 150 at the rear, this relatively weird profile, flat track style. Um, it doesn't really flick in the way you'd expect from a sport bike. It kind of, kind of lazily rolls into corners, but that gives you the idea of what this bike is trying to do, right? It's supposed to be a more relaxed and, you know, cruisery type of bike. But it's got a good velvety hammer type of torque to it. It <laughs> flicks over on its side so strangely. Let's open it up just, just a little bit. Yeah, that's a healthy amount of power. But again, like once you start flicking it in, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in my rear end or my front end, honestly. Because of these 19s and because of these tires, it's just, it's a really different experience. Um, throttle feel is really good though. I, I feel like the throttle response is accurate. Um, I know this is a ride-by-wire system because it has traction control and all that kind of stuff, but honestly, it works really, really well. I'm not really noticing any strangeness or dead spots or weird on-off throttle. Like as we'll see here, we just chop the throttle off and then roll back on nice and smooth and it works super well. Yeah, man, this thing, <laughs> you, you, can, you can do sport bike stuff with it, man. What's funny is that Dan and I were comparing it back and forth to the Desert Sled. It's completely different from the Desert Sled. The Desert Sled feels like a big supermoto with the V-twin that's just like a little too heavy. This feels like a naked bike, but that has a cruiser mentality about it that you could, if you're brave enough, take off-road. But I've, It's so pretty. Why would you want to take this thing off-road? TFT Dash is so cool, so premium. I love the black on white. Really, really cool feature. Oh man, yeah, I love big twins like this, man. It. Uh, I was talking to Dan. My reference point for this was kind of the the Monster 1200S that I rode a few weeks ago, uh, but it's com- it's completely different from the Monster 1200S. But the power delivery actually isn't all that different. It's still that velvety, torquey kind of hammer of a bike. It doesn't rev out as high, but for street duty, uh, this is perfectly adequate. This feels absolutely great on the street. I am a bit sad that it doesn't come with a quick shifter. I feel like an $18,000 motorcycle should 100% come with a quick shifter. There's no reason why this thing doesn't have a quick shifter. Uh, so, so that is a bit of a drag. You see here, we just roll on in third. It's rapid, it's a rapid bike, and it builds that torque from really low, right? So if we'll see here, you know, we're at three and a half thousand RPM, wick the throttle, and it wakes up. Really, really nice performance out of this motor. It's really, really tractable, really nice. Not gonna scare you. Uh, Doesn't have an insane top end rush. The MT-10 feels way faster than this bike, which makes sense. It has like 40 more horsepower, but, the bottom end on this bike feels phenomenal. Really strong, really, really nice, torquey bottom end. 
But boy, that front end feel is so strange, dude. It's just kind of like, hey, are, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, you could do it. And it's like, are you positive? Are you sure you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, probably. Let's find a little turnout spot and then head back up, back to Dan and give him his lovely FTR back. But overall, man, FTR is a cool bike. I think, um, I, I kind of wish that, you know, they, they could take this platform and make like an ADV cruiser spec version of it, like a little less sporty than this. But I'd also love to see like a hopped up version of this with a shorter wheelbase and some sticky tires because I think that would be a ripper of a machine. But I think right now at the $18,000 price point, you know, you can get a Tuono, you can get an MT10 for less than that, you can get uh, a lot, a lot of hyperbike for that money. And I just feel like this doesn't make a super strong case for why it deserves your cash over something like a Tuono, over something like those kinds of bikes because the value prop isn't quite clear to me. Let's turn off here and then flip back around. Practice our U-turns, Dan. Yeah, no quick shifter. That's crazy. That's crazy that an $18,000 motorcycle doesn't have a quick shifter. I mean, it'll do it though, man. You gotta be a little brave with these tires, but it'll, it'll definitely haul. Man, that's a lot of torque. Yeah, but the top end just isn't there. It's got all this velvety bottom end, but not a whole lot of top end, which makes sense. Like 120 horsepower is a good chunk, but when you're competing against hyper bikes, man, I just, or hyper nakeds rather, it's a tough sell. It's a really tough sell. I think the people that buy this are, are people like Dan, people that you know, maybe come from the Harley background, they want to dip their toes into something a little bit more sporty, but they're not really sure about getting a Japanese or a European bike. I mean, dude, Super Duke R, are you kidding me? Would trounce all over this thing, but it's a way different experience because right now, you know, put it in fourth gear and you're just moseying down this road. You got that long wheelbase. You almost feel like you're on a big American cruiser, you know, it feels that way, it feels like a supple, relaxed kind of ride. Uh, but man, when you're talking about Super Duke, uh, 20, MT10, those kind of bikes, this is not a comparison point for those. But again, like I said, the consumer that's gonna look at an FTR is probably not really thinking about a Super Duke R, honestly. Um, and this is a totally different type of motorcycle. Man, it cooks it pretty good though. Big long sweeper here, really stable. Even on these tires and this 19 inch. I really like that it comes with these dual disc Brembos up front. Really, really nice addition to this motorcycle. I have nothing good, to, I have nothing but good things to say about Brembo brakes. I have a set on my Daytona and I love the way they work. Yeah, this dude, this bike will do it. It doesn't feel quite right doing it, but it'll do it. <laughs> Begging for an exhaust though. Oh my god.
really enjoyable motorcycle, honestly. You just have to set your expectations with it. If you're expecting Super Duke R or MT10 or Tuono, you're gonna be really disappointed with it, right? If you're expecting Hyperbike, if you're expecting just like a really unique American riding experience that's somewhere between a cruiser and a sport bike, this thing rules, man. There's nothing quite like this bike, honestly. This is a really unique riding experience. I, I've never ridden any motorcycle like this. This is really, really different. Going over these bumps here, the suspension's really, really supple. Uh, I, I don't know if Dan has it set up that way with a lot of dampening and rebound or something, or less rebound, uh, but it's just really compliant over those bumps. Yeah, it's, man, this thing, <laughs> it's really enjoyable. There's not a lot of performance, but the quality of the performance is awesome. Boy, what a unique riding experience, man. Like, it's, it's so different from any other bike, really. Um... The thing that I was mentioning is it's such like a, you have to have the right expectations when you when you jump on this bike. Yeah. Um, if you jump on it expecting, you know, Super Duke, Tuono, MT-10, it's not like that at all. No. But if you also jump on it expecting a cruiser, it's going to blow your hair off, right? Because it's got some balls to it for sure. But uh, it's it's super cool. It does a lot more than you think it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, 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 that's all I need. That's that's kind of why I did that. It's, I mean, it's all I need. I don't need something like this, which this is like, I, I played with that at the range, and yeah. it was fun. It was fun. <laughs> it was very, very what you want, you know, if yeah. you want that. This right here is exactly what I wanted, and I just got the bike that was right for me, and that's all it is. Yeah. No, it's dude, I could definitely see why you got this bike. It's really, really cool. And you coming from that Harley background, I could totally see why you stepped up to this thought about this and then probably jumped on this and you're like holy shit this thing rips yeah that, <laughs> the first ride i did on this i, I remember that video i yeah. was giggling like a girl so yep. the, there's nothing wrong with giggling like a girl but uh <laughs> i i was so ecstatic with it and you just know that's when it's your bike you know it's just oh yeah this is all i want and this is all i need that's how i felt uh i mentioned as well talking about how different it is from the, uh, the desert sled because i feel like people weirdly look at the two of them and I'm like, they're so different. Yeah. Completely it, different riding experience. It's a, it's like a scrambler tracker, but I mean, it's a different thing. It's yeah. a completely different thing. Yeah. Um, it's a lot lower. Um, the scrambler is like, I think a 34.5 inch seat height or 35 inch. No, it's not 35. Um, this feels a lot more sporty. Like I said, this feel, this feels like right in the middle of like a cruiser and a sport bike. Just, it's really unique that, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I love the the look of the tires, but part of me would want to swap something else. But this 19-inch front, you can't get super sticky rubber in 19s, really. You're going to get, like, an adventure-oriented tire, really. It was the best yeah. you could do. There, there's a few tires out there, um, just a few. I, I mean, I'm talking on yeah. less than, like, one hand uh, for that front tire for more, like, a sportier-type ride. Um, but it, they're out there and, and Scott, the, the guy from Indian, he has, he got the first FTR, I got the second one in Tucson and he swapped his tires out. So I'm probably just yeah. going to follow his lead since he knows more than I do on the, the physical part, uh, or the spec part. But yeah, it, it, those tires, I mean, they're good for what they are, but yeah, <laughs> if you want to do something crazier, you got to get something else. <laughs> The, the thing that I enjoyed about it as well is um, it gives you that velvety low-end torque, but then it doesn't have an insane top end. Like, you, yeah. you pull it out to the top, and you're like, yeah, okay, like, it's, you know, it's manageable. Yeah. Um, it's not like some, you know, you'd say 1,200 cc's, and you're going to think it's going to be a rocket ship, but it's all that performance at the bottom, which makes it a great street bike, which, because yeah. you're in that low rev, and from a stoplight, it probably feels just like, oof, like, just goes, you know? Yeah. Like, I love that. And that's all you need. You go zero to the speed limit by the end of the intersection. Oh, yeah. And that's all you... <laughs> That's all I do. Have you, uh, has anyone swapped on 17s on the front? Do you know? Um, I, I'm part of an FTR group on Facebook, and there's been a lot of people that have done some custom stuff, and I'm pretty yeah. sure there's somebody has just because there's more tire options. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you could definitely swap those out. Um, but I just wouldn't know how, and, and I haven't really looked into it. So. Yeah, no, I get it, yeah. Um, one thing that I thought about as well that would be really cool, and I don't think anyone would ever do this, but um, they could take this platform because this, this is a great motor, great chassis, uh, but if they made like a sort of like this version where it's like you kind of cruiser adventure, kind of like, you know, more relaxed version of it, 
I really wish, and I don't know, maybe they make it, the, the 750, like, just shorten up that wheelbase, maybe put 17s on it, hop up the motor a little bit more. I think uh-huh. it'd be a ripper, dude. I think that I, this is a modular frame, so um, I think they chose that uh, for a reason. I think at some point, I mean, Indian and Polaris have been pretty smart with just sending out one new thing at a time to yeah. kind of get a gauge. Yeah. And this thing is selling quite a bit, and it's doing really well. It's got a lot of popularity, a lot of third third-party aftermarket parts now, and yeah. I think they're going to put like a 750 or a 600 or a smaller engine in there and they're able to do that. And I honestly, if, if they made like a desert sled style where it's more so off-road on-road, yep. like 70, 30 or something, I might actually get something like that and stay with an Indian and just mess around on that one off-road. Yeah. Cause I think if you, yeah, like you said, if you increase the ground clearance a little bit, yeah. uh, maybe you made the bars a little bit higher, I think it'd be a blast. Um, you got to ride the desert sled, man. I'd love for you to jump on my sled because it's so different from this bike. I, I don't know if I can reach my leg over. I'm so sure. <laughs> get one of those stools, those clops. Okay, I'll, I'll come and I'll get you a little stool, yeah. And then I'll, I'll push you to take off. <laughs> oh, dude, I definitely would love to. I would love to, to swing by there and, and uh, ride that desert sled Yeah. and have some fun. Well, guys, that was a ride on the FTR. Hope you enjoyed. And also, check out Dan Dan's channel. He makes a lot of cool safety content, uh, really, really, like, professional and safety-focused content that you guys can check out if you are – I kind of view your content as, like, you know, the in-depth jumping-off point after my stupid entertainment that I make. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get, like, hardcore facts and, like, just real, like, solid advice, like, you go to yours. Like, we, we give solid advice, but we joke around, too, you know? Yeah, edutainment and, and straight education, I guess. And yeah. I think it's a good combination. So thank you so much, man. No, for sure, yeah. So go check out Dan Dan's channel. He also rides his FTR on that channel, too. So if you're into the bike, go and check that out. And with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. See you.